come here. Let me show you these two cool effects that I just added to one of my clients Go Hello website. He's trying to sell AI for local businesses. So I'm going to show you what these two effects that I added on his websites are, how you can add them and transform your GHL or AI SaaS website to help you get more clients. All right, so very quickly, let me show you the three sections that my client wanted to add in his AI SaaS websites, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I added them. The first one was this section right here. So you see, it's very cool, sends out, and, and it's kind of unique. There's something cool about it. The second section, which I thought was very cool, was this section right here. So you see that as I scroll, these rows kind of like snap, so they have like a very cool interactive effect. And I saw the same thing on this website right here. So I'm gonna show you exactly by the end of this video how you can do this in your own GHL website as well, even if you don't know any code at all. Let me go back to high level right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do these effects in my GHL AI light mode template. So it's this website that you've seen right now. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you might've already seen this template, which for my client, it's exactly where he wanted to add this on. So let me just go back to high level. I'm going to click edit right here and then show you exactly how I would add these three sections on GHL. So the first section that we're going to build is this section right here. Very straightforward, very simple, but I still wanna start with something easy and then build myself to more complicated sections toward the end of the video, like this one right here. So I'm gonna go back to high level. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it right after these uh, features here. So I'm gonna click this, create a new section and start with adding a one column row. And here, what I'm going to do is, uh, let me put this here so I see exactly what I'm looking at so I can build it live for you. We have a headline container with four rows, and then we have these uh, very cool cards. Two of them have round edges, two of them have squared edges. So it's like a unique style, and that's what my client wanted as well. So let's go back to high level, and we're going to start by adding a headline. In this case, because I already have this, I'm just going to duplicate this, move it up here. And then the second thing that we're going to add is at a one column row. And in here, what I'm going to do is start by building just one of these columns. And once I have the entire layout, then I'm going to duplicate it to save myself some time. So let's go back here. And I saw that the first thing that I had was a kind of like a stat right here. So that's what I'm going to add. Let's start with this 8x, for instance, right here. So I'm going to type the word 8x or the text 8x. Make this a little bit bigger. So let's say... 44 just like this and if I wanted to change the font weight I could definitely do that let's say a little bit bolder just like this let's make sure that it matches the rest of my website so the color that I am using is this purple for my different headers so it's kind of like a not quite black but it's like a dark purple to match the entire vibe of the website after this I'm going to add a space and then this text right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this paragraph and then drag it drop it here. And if you see on this section, everything's left aligned. So let's just go ahead and do this very quickly. Click on my first subheadline here. And then under styles, I know they changed this a little bit. So even for myself, it takes me a bit to get used to it because I was more used to it to how it was in the past. But anyways, let's put this left aligned right here. I do notice that there's some padding, probably like 10 pixels. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Select on the actual column. And then let's do 10. Maybe, yeah, let's keep it at 10 for now. And now what I'm going to do is I want to add that spacing. The way that I do this is by adding a divider. And I'm going to make this divider transparent. That way, like we don't see a line there. And for the styles, I'm going to go ahead and add it more padding so that we take up more space or like add more space uh, like we have on that website. So let's do this. What I'm going to do now is click on this actual column. And I'm going to go to general and go ahead and change the colors right here. So let's say that my first color is going to be this orange right here. So that is what we have right now, which is very similar to this right here. I know it doesn't look like it, but I'll show you how in just one sec. Now that I have this section, what I'm actually going to do is duplicate it a couple more times, or before I do that actually, because if I was to duplicate it like this, you see that there's no space. So what I'm gonna do now is delete this, select on that section, go to styles, and then add some margin on the sides. That's gonna make it so that we will have some space in here. In this case, I see that it's very, very thin. So I will do something like probably three pixels or five pixels for now, let's just do five on each side like this. And now that I've actually done that, when I duplicate this, you'll see that I have this gap right here. Let me duplicate it another time or four times in total. Now that we have the four rows right here, I'm going to make sure that this uh, edges are round. So let's just go ahead and do this very quickly. I'm gonna do it for the second and the fourth column. So let me click on the second column, go to styles, select full border, 
make sure that this is solid one pixel and then for the actual border color i'm going to select this to be transparent now that i've done this what i'm going to do is go to border radius and experiment with different border radius i think in this case i'm going to do 20 just from experience i know that that's going to look similar to what we have right here and i could just as i already mentioned like add the same borders right here in this case just to save myself some time I, i'm going to delete this duplicate it and then shift it towards the very end like you see right here now that we have this what i'm going to do is change the different colors so let's say from orange i'm going to make it so that this one is yellow and then this one is going to be green and then my last one is going to be blue let's just say so that is how very easily i've been able to create that same section on my GHO website so this is what they had and this is what we have right here so this is the website right here you see very cool very interactive let me scroll down to that specific section which is this one right here so you see this is what I have literally I recreated this in minutes and this is what those guys had now I'll spend more time making the fonts to be exactly the same add more spacing here on the size and at the bottom but you get the idea, like very simple. That's how we've been able to create this section on GHO. Now I'm going to show you exactly how I built this section right here, which is very cool. And as I already mentioned, I've seen on other websites like this one as well. I think that's kind of like a new trend. Let me show you very quickly how you can do this on high level. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I see that first we have this headline. So I'm going to just duplicate what I had, or actually what I'm going to do is add a new full width section duplicate my row right here and then once I have this drag it and drop it all the way down to this new section I'm going to add a new section as well which is where I'm going to have each of these different cards the way that I'm seeing this based from experience again is that this is each uh, uh, row so there's a one row this is another row and then I could have it so that it's two or three different columns the final result will look something like this just so you get a little bit more context but for now let's just go ahead and add a one column row I'm going to add way more space in here on this main blue, uh, green section because I know I want it to be more spaced out let's say 80 at the top and then 80 at the bottom what I'm going to do right now is start by adding in another column because I do want to have a two column row and on one side I'm going to have an image like this and on the other side I'm going to have something like this so let me just go back to high level and here I'm going to start by adding that image so let's just go to general click this right here and I've already added a bunch of images let's say that my first image was this one right here and on this side I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this add a sub headline let's say like in my client's case what he wanted to do is showcase each AI feature from the AI GHL employee uh, like right here so here what I'm going to do is type AI that works for you now this is just placeholder copy of course based on the niche what my client is offering and all that stuff I'll be more specific but you get the idea let's say that the first feature will be voice AI what I'm going to do afterwards is in the same fashion that I added this divider this uh, spacing I'm going to duplicate it bring it down here and then add my page or paragraph right here very cool very easily I'm going to make sure that everything is left aligned and add some padding here at the sides before I do that actually so let's do 40 or 60 on this side and then 60 on this side as well make sure that everything is left aligned like you see right here and then lastly let's say that I wanted to add a button so I'm going to go up here and then duplicate this button like you see me doing and let's just paste this here i'm going to add some more spacing here at the bottom just so it does it's not too cramped just like this so now that i have this the one thing that i do see as well is that here each section or each uh row actually is of a different color so for now let's just click on this section and i'm going to make it so that this section will be let's say we pick the same colors that we had up here so let's start with yellow now that we have this right here what I'm going to do is you see that here there's like an image a logo so let me just go ahead and add this very quickly I'm going to add an image and I've already added my image as well and the image that I'm going to add is this one right here so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller let's say 300 pixels just like this before I duplicate uh, I like to add some more padding here at the bottom or actually margin so let's say I do 40 then once I duplicate, I'll go ahead and have more spacing between each section. And now, of course, change this to be of a different color. Let's say I do the orange. Something that you may notice is that in here, all of the edges were squared. But on my website, the style that I have is half round edges. So I want to make sure that I'm consistent. So what I would do right here is select the section, like the whole row. 
and then for the styles go ahead and add a full border once i do that select one pixel make sure that this is transparent again and select again the border radius make sure that it's 20 just like this now of course right now we can't see it and actually i made a mistake that i should have known before i need to make not just this column but the entire box of that orange so what i'll do is in general i'll, I'll show you exactly what i mean so let's say i select this row and i add a different color let's say i do blue you see how the row containing both uh, columns is blue and in this case i've just applied color to this individual column so that's like i need to add it to the actual row so that i get this round edges effect so what i could do is just match the colors right here or remove the color in this case and then if i did want to keep this orange i'll just go ahead and click this right here and select orange just like this i need to do the same thing for this one so i'm going to delete it since this is now the actual like the proper way to do it and before I do that, actually, something that I wanted to do um, as I'm building this live is that here there's no borders. So let me just go ahead and do this very quickly as well while keeping the round edges style that I have on this website right here. First of all, what I'm going to do is make sure that I remove any spacing here on the sides and at the top. So I'm going to select the blue row. Make sure that for stylings, I select this to zero and then here zero as well. And then here zero on this side as well. So now there's no spacing. Now, of course, uh, we don't have the round edges, so I need to select my actual column. Go again to styles, border, full border, one pixel. Make sure that this is transparent and then select the same border radius. So if I had 20, I need to do 20. If in your case you had, let's say, 50 because you wanted rounder edges, then make sure that you here match it to be 50 as well. In my case, it's 50. So now you see how I've been able to match this section to look kind of like this but with the style that i'm using on my own website with round edges now that i have this i'm going to make this here just like this what i'm going to do is then go ahead and duplicate this entire blue row you see that it's kind of tough because i've removed all of the borders what you can do if this happens to you and these are tricks that i haven't seen anyone else share online is you can click on the column and then add some margin here let's say 20 that way you do have that ability to click on this blue uh, row once I have this I'm then going to go ahead and duplicate it so let's duplicate it three times just like this so I have three different cards and now that I have all my different cards let me go ahead and spend some time changing the images and the color of this right here all right let me just do the last one live so I'm going to click this right here select my image let's say it's this one and then change the color of my blue row so let's just do this here and select this pink so now you see i've changed the four different sections now the last thing that i'm going to do is add the code and even if you don't know any code no worries this is super simple the first thing that i'm going to do is click on my container that is housing all of the different rows which in my case if you're doing it the same way in your case it'll be the same is this green section we're going to go to styles and then here under styles for custom class we're going to type the word stack container so let's just do this very quickly stack dash container so you see how this is spelled right here hit enter and what i'm going to do next is go to each row and then for under styles if i scroll all the way down here for custom class i'm going to select stack dash row and it'll make sense in just one sec and then i'm going to select enter right here and let's just do the same for these other sections right here so stack dash row and anyways you get the idea i'm just going to do it for all of them right here the last step is to add the custom code so i'm going to click on my custom css right here now if you already have my notion doc we're going to go to tutorial 2.11 right here if you don't have my doc or you don't know what it is you can check it out the second link in the description now at this point i haven't finished writing the instructions but before this video goes live there will be step-by-step -step instructions and you can just watch this video as well go to where you see this code snippet and we're going to go ahead and copy this right here go back to the notion doc and then paste this this right here so very simple very straightforward i'm going to hit save right here and now you see that when i scroll down here the cards stack on top of each other and very easily i've been able to add this effect now very quickly there's one problem that i noticed when i was building this website and is that if you have this line right here that you see on screen right now it's going to make it so that this effect doesn't work so in my case that line is here in one line 31 to line 33 i'm going to go ahead and delete this right here and the reason why i had this on this website is because when i had these carousels if i didn't add this it's going to overflow not to get too technical 
but now because of the fact that high level has added this carousels natively we don't even need to add code to build this right here so what you could do is just click this right here add a full width section and then go ahead and add a one column row very quickly i know this is not related to the same style but i want to make sure that i don't get any comments saying that i didn't address this so what you'll do is do logo which is by the way what i just mentioned a new feature that high level dropped and now you see that I have this moving carousel as well. What I would do is make sure that I delete this right here. And you may be wondering how the hell do I delete this if I don't see the delete button right here. Very quickly, what I would do is I would cut all of the code, hit save. Once I have this, I would then go ahead and delete this section and then go ahead and paste this code again hit save and there you go that's how you'd be able to have this right here so now that we have this let's just go ahead and preview this right here so this is what the website looks like you see that there's no overflow which was the reason why i had that code in the first place technical stuff but for now just follow along what i'm showing you in this video once i scroll down to this section right here you see that we have this section that we already added and then we have this cool section where each row stacks on top of each other as i scroll up and down the effect works so it's a very cool thing that you can add on all of your GHO websites now if you want to have a beautiful GHO AI SaaS website for your business but you don't have the time to code this create custom graphics build everything from scratch you can click the first link in the description and get this beautiful six page website it took me like four weeks to build and we will usually charge three to four to five thousand dollars you can just get it for just a fraction of the cost or if you're interested in getting all of my custom effects and build GHO websites like a pro you can get my notion doc by clicking the second link in the description description.